Coming up, the shocking story of a young black lab in Birmingham. Just pure starvation that's caused this. The race to rescue two little dogs from one very big mess. It's just an overpowering smell of, of urine and faeces. It is pure, you know, dog waste. And how this aggressive German shepherd was transformed from this to this, all thanks to this garden. It gives us a nice area to bring him down, to calm him down. Dogs are the UK's favourite four-legged pet. As that saying, they're number one with me. Bang! Roll over. <laughs> oh, look at that. Sadly, though, reports of abuse and neglect keep flooding in. In just one year, the RSPCA's cruelty hotline will receive over a million calls. <laughs> Sit. The West Midlands is home to over 600,000 dogs, making it the third most doggy area in the country. And Inspector Hershey Bowl is right on the front line. Oh, look at you two! Oh, this is a um, puppy heaven, this. Hershey became an inspector in 2000 and hasn't looked back since. A former veterinary nurse, her favourite breed is the German Shepherd. It's early Monday morning and Hershey is on her way to investigate a number of calls, all received about the same very skinny dog. I suppose it just uh, adds weight to the allegation when, when more than one person rings about that animal. It's um, extremely thin and it's got a problem with um, fur loss on its body. It just describes it as being a um, black Labrador. Hershey's naturally very concerned. This doesn't sound like a healthy lab. Hello. The owners won't let the crew in and our cameras have to stay outside. The dog is called Duke and as soon as Hershey sees him, she knows she was right to be concerned. But the owner claims Duke's been going to the vets for treatment. Did they ask to see the dog back? But Hershey suspects the man's story isn't true. I'm not happy with the condition of the dog. He's extremely emaciated. And also he's got an extensive amount of fur loss. I'm going to take the dog to a vet because I feel that you may have committed an offence in failing to provide the dog with the necessary treatment that it needs. And as a frail-looking duke leaves the house, it's clear to see why the owners didn't want our cameras inside. He looks like a dog in his final years, but shockingly, he's only 14 months old. Duke is supposed to be a Labrador, but obviously he's just extremely thin, very, very, very underweight. Um, and I'm not really satisfied. Come on, darling, with the, um, with the explanation. You see, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to, I'm only little, and I shouldn't be able to pick up a Labrador dot-sized dog. In the UK, Labrador Retrievers are the most popular breed of family dog. Known as loyal, loving, and affectionate, they respond well to discipline and have a life expectancy of up to 12 years. They had a very small amount of dog food in the house. Certainly not enough to feed this dog. Before Hershey leaves, she wants to check out the owner's story and calls the vet they claim Duke had visited. 14-month-old Labrador called Duke, extremely emaciated and also extensive fur loss. The owners um, are claiming that they've been to the surgery two months ago. I've asked whether or not uh, they were asked to come back after that period and they're saying no. And she's made a disturbing discovery. They've got no details at all of this dog or that owner, or that property. They'll tell you anything when they're kind of in a corner. Duke needs urgent medical attention, so Hershey takes him to nearby Manor Vets. Let's see what she thinks, really. All those bits on his back, they're all parts of his skin. He's got some scabs here on his spine. You know, that there's just absolutely no weight on that dog at all. Right, come on, Duke. Hi. Hi, Pam. Hi, Veterinary surgeon Pam O'Neill is immediately concerned. Looking at this dog straight away, you can tell there's a problem. What I would like to do is offer him some food and see yeah. how he reacts. Yeah. Um, when you watch the dog eat, it tells you how hungry it is. Sit. Do you sit? Good oh. boy. Well done. There we go. Wow. And poor Duke couldn't express himself any clearer. I think that kind of says it, really. Yeah, it explains quite a lot. At the moment, it's just pure starvation. It's just been failed, been failed completely by the owner. And it's just really sad. 
He was ravenous. He gulped down the food in a matter of seconds, and that's abnormal behaviour. Young male Labradors should weigh between 25 and 37 kilos, but what about Duke? His weight at the moment is 14.1 kilos. He should be at least double that, if not more. Duke is half the weight he should be, and if Hershey hadn't found him, he could have collapsed in days. How long does it take for a dog to get to this state? Weeks, months to get to this stage. It hasn't happened overnight. You can just see, I can literally put my whole hand around his waist. That's shocking, that is. Not only is Duke worryingly underweight, but his skin is a cause for concern too. It's quite clear that he is suffering at the moment in relation to his skin, and he shouldn't be in this condition. I suspect he may have mites on his skin. So what we need to do is do some skin scrapes to find out. He's going to need some antibiotics and treatment if the mites are present. It's all pointing towards uh, neglect and starvation. Duke's owners have possibly violated the Animal Welfare Act. Hershey calls the police so that they can seize the dog and place him in the hands of the RSPCA until the case is resolved. I just require yourselves to seize the dog um, and do a statement so that I can keep it in the RSPCA's care for further treatment. He's now going to get all the rest and recovery he needs and Hershey will follow up his case for a possible prosecution. I'll seek to interview the owners and, and, and see if they'll sign the dog over. Once he's fit and healthy enough, we can then find a good home for him. They couldn't manage, they should have contacted somebody for help. And that's what makes me really angry. Furious she may be, but Hershey's efforts may well have saved Duke in the nick of time. We'll catch up with his story later on. Many of the dogs the RSPCA deal with have been through a lot of stress and anxiety. To help calm the canines in their care, the staff at Bath Cats and Dogs Home have recently opened a specially designed sensory garden. And today we've a rare opportunity to see how it works. Selected herbs, sand pits, play areas and ponds provide a place for dogs with behavioural issues to be retrained in the hope they'll be successfully rehomed. Behaviourist Steve Hill manages the garden and today he's here with Leo, an anxious German Shepherd. Leo's been at the centre for four months and is going through a programme of gradual retraining and socialisation with people and other dogs. Oh, good man, yes. When he first came in, people probably would have perceived a lot of his behaviour as being quite aggressive. But in actual fact, it's probably due to him not being socialised enough with people and dogs. In 2013, Leo was taken from a flat after his owner was arrested for another offence. He was very aggressive, especially around other dogs. <laughs> Steve, with help from colleague Rosie Taylor Trigg, feels the garden is the perfect opportunity for Leo to learn to interact with humans and other dogs. The sensory garden's really helped Leo. It gives us a nice area to bring him down, to calm him down from being worked up in the kennels, to then sort of be able to train him while he's nice and calm. Today is a big day. Up until now, Leo has only been allowed into the garden alone. But today, he's going to be put in with another dog called a go-see exercise, it will involve Leo getting used to ignoring other dogs until his owner gives him permission to go see them. He's likely to be quite lively, but we'll see how he does. Come on then, this way, go see. Kennel mate Meg the Staffy is brought in as the guinea pig. And the initial signs aren't great, as Leo is as boisterous as ever. Steady, steady. Oh my God, it's so fast. Yeah. <laughs> But slowly, Meg begins to stand her ground. And Leo begins to calm down and follow her more playful behaviour. He's learning a lot from playing with, with dogs like Meg. And more importantly, he's learning how to socialise and um, how to interact with dogs properly. Leo's still got more work to do with his trainers in the garden, but step by step, he's getting there. It won't be long before he's ready to be rehomed. Good boy! We'll catch up with him later on. Ah, oh, it's a dirty subject, but as a dog owner, you have to deal with it on a daily basis. Up, oh, still warm. Unless you're prepared to get your hands dirty, it's a problem that can soon mount up. 
In the UK, dog mess is one of the most common complaints made to local councils. With an estimated thousand tonnes dropped daily, it's no wonder it's getting up people's noses. Grimsby falls into the area supervised by RSPCA veteran Inspector Graham Petty. Can't see she's hiding behind the bin, so I can't see what condition she's in. Graham is a huge dog lover and has no less than eight rescue dogs at home. Today, he is going to have to deal with the dirtier side of dog rescue. A reports come in about a little dog left in a lot of mess. The allegation is that the dog's almost left there unaccompanied and the dog's needs aren't being met in the sense that the environment's not being kept clean and it's not allowed outside, it's just it's toileting in the house and, and making a mess. So we'll, uh, we'll go down there and have a look and see what we can find out. No one seems to be home, and although Graham can't see the dog, he can see what it's left behind. The floor is absolutely covered with faeces, dog faeces and empty dog food tins. Now he just needs to find a dog. Oh, there she is. I think there's two. Two little Shih Tzu Las Abso type dogs. I'm a little bit concerned because the door's locked, but the key's still in. So that's obviously been locked from the inside. If it's the same situation in the back, then nobody can actually get in. So it indicates that there may be somebody inside already. Graham hopes he will have some more luck around the back. And he does. Hello? The back door is open, but nobody's home. We're a little bit of a loss as to what's happened at the property over the last few days, um, other than what's visible through the front door. The RSPCA have no power of entry. Worried the dogs may be starving to death, Graham has to draft in some expert help. The conditions are totally unacceptable, it's horrendous in there, and I'm going to be taking advice from a vet and the local police and see if we can get those dogs out as quickly as possible. We're just waiting for the police to come so we can get in. We can get local vet the Tom Eddy arrives within minutes. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not great, is it? The whole house uh, looked to be in quite a bit of a state, uh, which kind of made me wonder what, what sort of condition the dogs were in uh, and, and if there was any neglect there. Um, really, I kind of want to get inside. Graham has called the police to legally gain access to the property. Police! And once inside, it's obvious the owner wasn't expecting visitors. Hey. Bit of a mess, isn't it? And in the dark, amid the dog mess and empty dog food tins, Graham eventually finds two very dirty but delighted Shih Tzus. <laughs> After two decades as an inspector, Graham has seen and smelt almost everything, but it still shocked him how people can live. Well, the, the floor is absolutely covered here. The sofa's littered with it. I wouldn't even like to hazard a guess when this place was last cleaned out. It's just an overpowering smell of, of urine and feces. Uh, it's not just dirt, it is, it is pure, you know, dog waste. There are no clues as to where the owner might be, and neither dog is wearing a name tag or collar. For Graham, this is one of the most extreme cases he's ever seen. It's one of the worst, certainly in my top five. Really? It's a job for grand designs, I think. <laughs> Something or other. DIY, yeah, well, yes, yes. Yeah, got I. You need a little one. Yeah, cute you are. Yeah. Look at this thing. <laughs> what surprised me is that there is somebody still living in here. But there's no excuse for this. This is not a clean, comfortable environment for a dog to live in. Although the dogs don't have name tags, a police officer discovers some pet medication amongst the rubbish, and the name can just be made out. Coco. Oh, is that you? Oh, that's Coco. Cool, cool. that it's got to see it in the Geordie accent, you see. <laughs> Much to the delight of Coco. Coco. Oh, okay. With the vet, the police, and Graham in agreement, Coco and her filthy friend can now be removed. Uh, it's pretty much unfit for um, a human to live there, let alone a couple of dogs. On, we definitely had to take them out of the house today. 
Details are left for the owner, explaining why their dogs have been taken and where they are being held. It's now up to them to contact the RSPCA. There's no silver line and there's nothing positive you can see about that property. It needs absolutely gotten. Coco and her companion are taken to Ashby Veterinary Surgery by Graham, who can't resist a quick cuddle before seeing the vet. Oh, now then. Hey. You're a smelly lad, aren't you? No? You're a smelly lad. Oh, that's Little guy first. As the dogs were surrounded by numerous hazards in the house, veterinary surgeon Tom has to check for any potential injuries. The ears are quite dirty, quite matted. The nails would need a clip as well. And miraculously, these dirty dogs are given a clean bill of health. So just a bit of an MOT, really. Good, good. Whoever has noticed this and brought it to our attention has saved the dogs from a lot of suffering. Uh, they've done the dogs a massive favour. With just a few minor ailments, Coco and her canine companion have made a lucky escape and a good bath for them and Graham will make the world of difference. We'll be back to see how bath time goes later on. Let's catch up with Duke, the skinny Labrador, rescued in Birmingham by Inspector Hershey Bowl. Duke was skin and bone when Hershey found him, but he's steadily transforming into a lovely Labrador here at Newbrook Animal Centre in Birmingham under the watchful eye of care assistant Jake. Duke's an absolute cracker and he's doing well here. He's recovering well from the, some of the problems that he had. Jake's one of numerous care assistants at Newbrook who help vets and perform general animal care duties. Newbrook itself was the first RSPCA welfare centre to have a rehoming department and a hospital under one roof, so Duke's in good hands. Duke is fit, healthy and just itching, in a good way, to find a new home, but problematic paperwork is getting in the way. Duke's part of a welfare case and he's stuck in a type of doggy limbo really because he, he, he's stuck with us looking after him until that point that he's signed over, the case is finished and we can find him a new home, get him settled down and get him living his life again. It's great to see Duke back to full health. In 2012, the RSPCA put forward over 2,000 prosecutions and there's every chance that Duke too will get some justice. Fast conclusion to these cases is what we need. That's what everyone needs, especially Duke. So it won't be long before he'll be free to find a new and loving family. Thousands of our four-legged friends are abandoned every year, but often the problem lies with the humans at the other end of the lead and not the dog. The West Midlands have their fair share of abandonment cases and Staffordshire is patrolled by Deputy Chief Inspector Jane Bashford. You can't just have an animal and then drop it. It's um, not on. Although the role can be upsetting and stressful, Jane is passionate about her job. She's been an inspector for seven years and is an enthusiastic fundraiser for the RSPCA. It's Wednesday afternoon and Jane's been called to a dog left in a house after its owners have moved away. Just on my way to a call that's come in about an abandonment of a dog. The suggestion is that the dog's been left at a property. Don't know anything else about it other than that. First, Jane must double check that the house is empty. And she's surprised to find the property is occupied. Hello. Hello. Hi, sir. Sorry to bother you. Just from the RSPCA. Is, is there a dog here? There is, yes. We've had a, a call to say that the dog had been abandoned. Has, yeah. These residents oh, have only okay. just moved in. Okay, right. And when they opened the front door to their new house this morning, they claim they didn't expect to find a dog. Where is the dog now in the garden? I put him in a cage because I have both oh, my mother-in-law. That's so. sensible. Would you mind if I come in? Is yeah, that all right? Yeah. Thank you. And the new tenants have even managed to find out a little bit about this mysterious Muttley. Well, I've been told his name was Bruno. Right. So he responded by that, but he's a really active dog. Is he? Hello, Bruno. Hello, mate. Bruno's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. It's an unusual case for Jane, and the facts keep getting stranger. When you came into the house, then, where was he? Where he did you find night. him? He was in the well, yard, was he? Was, yeah, oh, was that, it? That was last night. So. The tenants believe that Bruno may have been surviving on scraps he found in bin bags for days, possibly even weeks. And it seems the new residents have saved him from further suffering. So Bruno appears to be an uninvited house guest and Jane will have to find him a kennel at the local RSPCA Animal Centre. Hello there. I'm just out in an address in Burton. Previous tenants done a moonlight flit 
and left a dog at the property. Thank you. Thanks very much. See you. Bye. Well, our wonderful animal home of magic's up a kennel for him. Having found a space for Bruno, all Jane needs now is for the tenants to sign over a dog they don't even own. Because you've taken on this property now, and this dog's been left here, would you be prepared to sign the dog over to the RSPCA? Yeah. Yeah. With the paperwork signed, an excitable Bruno is now in the care of the RSPCA. It's a nice looking Staffordshire Bull Terrier dog. Seems quite friendly. Thankfully, our local animal home has got space, so we'll be able to take the dog down there tonight, get him safely housed and warm and fed. Um, then we'll have to make some inquiries to try and find the previous owner on this. Bruno's abandonment will need to be investigated further, but thanks to the new tenants, at least he's in safe hands now. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Thank you very much for that. All right. Look after yourself. Good luck with the baby. Bye now. The lady of the house is very heavily pregnant, and it's not what they expected today when they turned up to take residence of their new property. It's not acceptable. You can't just have an animal and then drop it. It's um, not on. Last year, Gary. Inspector Miranda Albinson was called out to a property in Bristol. Can they? Can these guys come out? Where two female Newfoundlands called Callie and Ty were found oh, living in poor conditions. That dog's particularly underweight, and that dog's underweight. Miranda could see that underneath their thick coats, Callie and Ty were worryingly thin. They're really skinny, aren't they? I mean, just get these guys checked by a vet. After being weighed at the surgery, Miranda's gut instincts were confirmed. About 31 and a half. Both girls were considerably underweight. Callie and Ty were taken to Brent Knoll Animal Centre, where, with a little TLC and a lot of food, they were successfully rehabilitated. Newfoundlands were originally bred as a working dog for fishermen in the Dominion of Newfoundland, now part of Canada. They have webbed feet, making them excellent swimmers, and it's said they have a strong instinct to rescue people from water. These gentle giants have a life expectancy of up to 15 years. It was never going to be easy finding a home for two elderly and enormous Newfoundlands, but only six weeks after being rescued, that's exactly what happened. Nine-year-olds Callie and Ty have been rehomed together by Mandy and Neil Templer. This is their favourite part of the day. <laughs> this is feed time. <laughs> They're looking super. They've put on um, a good amount of weight. In fact, with, with Callie, we've got to be careful now because she's at the stage where she could easily become overweight, which wouldn't do her any good. Ty, is, uh, she's still got a little bit to go. She's getting a little bit extra food at the moment. And we've also taught Callie to, to wait for her food so she's calm when, when she goes to eat instead of getting herself all wound up. Callie and Ty are in very capable hands, as Mandy and Neil are experienced Newfoundland owners. We've had uh, Newfoundlands before, and um, everybody we knew were telling us that these two were in the RSPCA, and eventually we had to go and have a look, didn't we? <laughs> Once we saw them, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> there was no turning back after that. Mandy and Neil knew instantly that they had to take them on as a pair. They're such good friends. Um, as far as we know, they've always been together. They're very much part of the pack and uh, it just would be dreadful to separate them. I wouldn't like to think of them apart. I just wish we had them from younger, didn't we? It would have been lovely. The girls have had a hat-trick of luck. Not only are their new owners experienced, they've been rehomed together and become rather spoilt in the process. I used to be a dog groomer, which is quite a useful thing when you've got Newfoundlands because the grooming never stops. They both love being groomed so much, and that's why I separate them, because one will push the other one out of the way to get to, get to the brush. <laughs> now living in the lap of luxury, their new home is worlds apart from their past lives. Spent, caged up and ignored. You're smiling at me, are you? You smile. Fox dogs. They say every dog has its day, and for Callie and Ty, it looks like theirs has just begun. It's so lovely to see them looking so happy. I hope it's true what they say, that dogs live in the moment and that they don't think about the past. If you think you could create a happy ending for a rescue dog, stay tuned to the end of the show for more details.
Back in Staffordshire, Inspector Jane Bashford rescued Bruno, an abandoned Staffy. Hello, Bruno. Hello, mate. Where was he? Where did he you find him? He was in the yard, was he? Oh, was it? That was last night. Who had been found by new tenants as they moved in. Good boy. But all is not as it seems. A local resident has just approached Jane and given her some startling new information. It turns out, according to neighbours, that uh, these people have lived at this address themselves for about nine months now and that this is their dog called Bruno. And they're in the process of moving out, not moving in. Not overly impressed, to be honest. With Bruno's story quickly developing more twists than a pug's tail, Jane needs some answers. Can I just have a quick word? Yeah, is that all right? Um, <sighs> there's no, no easy way to put this. Yeah. Is what you've told me true? Yeah. Is that not your dog? No. Have you not lived here for nine months? No. Are you in the process of moving out? No, this is our stuff. We've just brought it here. Yeah, but moving in or moving out? No, this is where we're moving to. I've just been told by somebody that you've lived here for the last nine months, no. right? And that this dog is called Bruno and he's been your dog and that reports have been made about the way the dog's been kept in the garden? No. Is that true? No. But Jane thinks she knows the truth and is like a dog with a bone. Is Bruno yours? He's not mine. Whose is he, darling? Come he on, be honest. He isn't literally my dog. Whose is he? Please, he tell is... me. He is a friend's dog. Right. But well, obviously it's not my dog. Right. I haven't got no pets. I wouldn't have... The only pet I've ever had is a goldfish. Right. How long have you lived here? Me? Not that long. How long, darling? You're lucky if I've lived here about two months. Right. And has he been here for that two months? The dog, probably about a month. But that isn't what she told Jane earlier. I've been told his name was Bruno. Right. So... When you came into the house then, where was he? Where he did you find him? He was in the door. yard, was he? The door was open. Oh, was yeah, it? That was, that was last night, so... Dog's been here for over a month whilst you've been living here. Yeah, well, I've not even been here a month. But you've just told me you've lived here for over a month. I haven't been living here, I've been staying. Staying here a month? Yeah, I've not been But living with the conversation here. going round in circles, it looks like Jane isn't the only person left confused. All I'm asking is, whose is the dog? The dog What's the mine. situation yeah. with the dog? That's what I'm saying, the dog is not mine. I've only been here today to fetch my stuff. So you're not in the process of moving in, are you? I've moved out ages ago. So essentially, you've done a great good number on the RSPCA today. Well, no, not really. So Jane's managed to get at least some of the truth, but the whole deception has been a waste of her time, and she's had enough. Hard-working people put money in their pockets to donate to our charity to enable us to do the work that we do, and I would rather not waste my time, you know, chasing up leads because somebody can't tell me the truth. That's what... Yeah? yeah? The fact that he's coming out now and it's been signed over, if, there was, if there'd been anything else, I swear to you, I'd have knocked all these doors and got written statements to prove, because the conditions in that back garden are not suitable for yeah, an animal. as far as I'm aware of, I've never known the environmental off to have come out. I'll leave you with it. Thank you. Thank you. A large part of an inspector's job is dealing with humans as well as dogs, and this encounter has left Jane a little ruffled you actually confront somebody with it and you get somebody that just looks at you and continues to lie in your face and continue and then adds new bits in and before you know where you are you just think I I'm lost I don't like being lied to I really don't like being lied to and that has really annoyed me despite the strange circumstances Jane can see that Bruno is fit and healthy so can be taken straight to RSPCA kennels but Jane's run of bad luck hasn't ended just yet oh dear have you piddled everywhere that must be my bad driving, is it? Hopefully you won't be here for too long before a nice family comes along to give him his, uh, his new life. I'd like to think that it would be the last time that somebody uh, pulls the wool over your eyes, but I don't think it will be. I think you know, it's just par for the course, really. Take it on the chin and uh, tomorrow's another day. Bruno can finally move into his temporary new home and we'll catch up with him later on.
Sometimes RSPCA inspectors have to deal with some truly shocking cases and they often don't know what they're going to deal with until they arrive on a job. In 2012, Inspector Kirsty Withnall led a raid on an animal centre in Oxfordshire following an anonymous tip-off that animals were being mistreated. And what she found would go down as one of the RSPCA's worst cases. Some viewers may find this footage disturbing. As soon as I arrived, it became quite clear there was a very big problem there. I could hear a large number of dogs barking and there was an overpowering smell of dog faeces. It was just total chaos. There was a scene of squalor. The floor is just wet with squashed dog feces, some of which is white where it's gone mouldy. It may be hard to believe, but the kennels was a family-run business that advertised clean and affordable boarding kennels through the Yellow Pages. The owners of the centre offered a door-to-door pick-up and drop-off service, which ensured that owners never set foot inside their premises. It was absolutely disgusting. There was dogs living in the most disgusting conditions, manageable, absolute filth and squalor. 20 dogs of various breeds, including puppies, were discovered at the centre. It appears like a mound, which I can only assume is a mixture of not even mud, but faeces. Some were thin, some had skin problems, some didn't want to move. It was a really pitiful sight. It was shocking to see so many animals living in the most disgusting conditions, manageable. One of the last animals to be discovered was a male golden retriever. I particularly remember sort of his eyes being sunken into his head. He was totally emaciated. Um, his hips, spine and ribs were poking out. Thankfully, the vet discovered he was microchipped and that his name was Winston. Now Kirsty was able to contact his overjoyed owners, Sandy and Jim Luca, who had had to kennel Winston at the centre for a year due to illness. They came to visit Winston, and he'd been really dull and depressed in the kennels um, since he'd been there, and he was so pleased to see his owners. When he saw us, God, he went spare. He jumping did. Jumping up to us, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Rushing said, round. Well, everyone, they couldn't, they couldn't the believe. The whole place, everybody was crying. Everybody, including us. After being given the all clear by the vets, Winston was returned home to Sandy and Jim. He was running around, wasn't he? We took yeah, him for a walk oh, around. He was licking my face. Licking Sandy's face. Ah. Uh, you know, we, we couldn't believe we'd found him, I think. In 2013, the owners of the Animal Rescue Centre were successfully prosecuted and were given a suspended prison sentence and banned from keeping animals for life. It was one of the worst cases I've ever dealt with. Seeing animals living in such terrible conditions is something that will always stay with me and I think everyone involved will always remember. Seeing animals in that condition really was quite unbelievable. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah. Lovely, isn't it? Ever since the day he was born, he followed Jim everywhere once he could walk. He looks amazing now, and the difference is quite incredible. It changed how strong a dog he is to survive the experiences he went through there. Winston had a very narrow escape. A brush you've had today. <laughs> and Sandy and Jim know they're lucky to have him still with them. Remember our Shih Tzus, Coco and Friend? They were rescued from a filthy house in Scunthorpe, unwashed and with matted hair. This is not a clean, comfortable environment for a dog to live in. It wasn't the way these traditionally pampered pooches expect to be treated. Shih Tzus originated in China, where they were favourites of the royal family and were so prized that the Chinese refused to trade any of the breed. Eventually, they came to England in the 1930s and were officially recognised in 1946. Coco and her friend have now been renamed, so meet Tommy and Bella. After being given a clean bill of health, they were taken to Radcliffe Animal Centre to await rehoming. Naturally, the staff at Radcliffe want them to look their very best for any new potential owners. A grooming session could really help their chances of being rehomed, so it's bath time. Hi. 
Hello, I brought Bella and Tommy to be groomed. <laughs> and Chloe, a very experienced pooch pamperer, is their stylist. So we're going to start off slow because the rescues, we don't know how they're going to react to everything. We don't know if they've been bathed before, you know, so, or been near a shower or anything like that. So we do have to start quite slow with them. Grooming might look like fun, but it's an essential part of a long-haired dog's health. Removing excess hair, dirt and stopping the coat matting, which can restrict movement and cause pain. Just give it a good rub. First of all, Bella's going to get a quick shampoo. Like that. Chloe needn't have worried. Bella seems to be loving this. Well, she seems to be quite enjoying it, bless her. Clean and pristine, it's time for a trim. It did feel quite dirty, it won't now. That's one of the reasons why we do bath them before we start clipping. It wouldn't clip as nice. Never again. Oh, someone's jealous. Good girl. There we go, hold on. Well, it seems to have gone okay for Bella, but will Tommy take so easily to the water? See that? Doesn't like it too much, bless him. Now that wasn't so bad, was it? Trim time. Not loving this, are you, Tommy? So, both done and looking good. And Tommy certainly seems to be impressed by Bella's new look. Quite enough of that, thank you. Hopefully the grooming will work and in the next few weeks both Tommy and Bella can find new homes and we'll keep you posted on that. Earlier on we met this boy, Leo. Leo used to have a bit of a bad temper but that's all changed now thanks to the hard work the team have put in. And that's not all that's changed because now Leo has got a new home. And something tells me they're big German Shepherd fans. We looked on the Bath Cats and Dogs home website and we saw him and that was it. My mind was made up. Just knew the Jamie Shepherds was the kind of breed that we always wanted. And lucky for us, Leo was at the home at the right time and we got him. Behaviourists Rosie and Steve of the RSPCA Sensory Garden encouraged the new owners to visit Leo before adopting him so they could pick up some handy hints to continue his training. A couple of the times that we went up there to, to meet him, he was out doing work with Rosie and <laughs> Rosie gave us a couple of techniques to do some work with him, with his recall, um, just throwing the ball, playing with him. Two or three techniques that she gave us when we went to visit him, we've carried on back here. Oh, yeah. no. It's those techniques and it's the work that Rosie and Steve did with him that you know, brought him to the level that meant he could actually leave and come to a new home. Good boy, well done. It's four weeks since Leo's been rehomed, and today Rosie and Steve are paying his new owners a visit. Here he is. Thank you. He's a boy. Who's this then? He's looking very well. Oh, he looks great. Yeah. Nah, he's come on a ton, done really well. All the basic stuff he's really getting, he's, he's picked up really Brilliant. quickly. Really, really good. That's fantastic. So that's really good progress for him. Well, I can see he's come a long way, you know, it's, uh, it's really good to sort of see that, that you're carrying on Rosie's work she's, she's put in place in the sensory garden. I tried to make his training into a game, um, so getting him to focus on me uh, being a really positive thing. This is his favourite toy and we found out very, very quickly. So he doesn't get this all the time, this is his reward now. You kind of get it off him, he's, he's a good footballer. <laughs> <laughs> come on then, come on. The RSPCA are always trying to find new and creative ways to rehabilitate dogs that have suffered from a traumatic past. It's like and it's clear the work Rosie and Steve began at the Sensory Garden has transformed Leo into the perfect family pet and rescued him from a life in the kennels. Thank you very much for that. All right. Just six weeks after being taken into the care of the RSPCA by Inspector Jane Bashford, Bruno was adopted by new owners. And this time, they're sure that he's their dog. And the Shih Tzus, rescued from Scunthorpe, are still part of an ongoing investigation and will hopefully be rehomed soon. <laughs>